Can you believe it? We have another episode of Sister Wives that's not the wedding. Yes. Yes. But wait, there's more. And? Sometimes we order more episodes. I have only watched the first half of the episode. It is already better than almost all four episodes of the one-on-one. Let's talk about it. Hello everybody, my name is Jenny. My channel is called Senior Perspective. I'm glad you found it. Let's talk some more about Sister Wives. Anyone who's watched my channel, you remember me saying, I think that Janelle and Christine and even Mary could make bank by sitting down, opening up a Patreon account, if them just sitting and watching the episodes and talking about it and giving their opinions. I think they can retire multi-millionaires if they start back at season one, episode one. Okay, so it's not going to happen. <laughs> Nobody's listening to me, but guess what? TLC heard me. Yes, they did. They watched my channel. <laughs> nope, they don't, actually. They don't. This talkback episode that aired last night are all for the wives and Cody watching season 18, episode one. I know there's another talk back episode coming up, and then that's all I see on the agenda. So I don't know if they only did the first two episodes, or if maybe, just maybe, this is going to go for the entire season. Stop teasing! Can you imagine how amazing that would be? Okay, I don't want to get myself too excited. Let's go ahead and talk about what we've seen last night. So let me just let you know that not only is this them watching the episode, and commenting on it, but TLC has given them viewer questions to respond to. I mean, they do listen, right? They do listen. So according to them, the little blurb at the beginning said this, for the first time, they will answer some of the toughest ever questions and comments. Now I will say that as soon as they aired that at the beginning, I thought I was sitting there thinking, yeah, will you? <laughs> I mean, really, will you? Yeah, right. But I don't think it disappointed. And again, I'm only halfway through it. In fact, I'm only 25 minutes through it, so I don't know if there's going to be an another one or two videos after this to finish out the episode. Okay, let's talk. Get to the good stuff or get off the stage. <laughs> so it shows everybody getting ready to go to their couches or chairs or wherever to watch this episode. Okay. We see Mary going out to take her trash. You know, I guess they just wanted some different environment. So they have Mary taking her trash out at the beginning. And she makes a funny line about how, like, how apropos is it that she's taking the trash out and she's getting ready to watch this episode. So that was good. Good job, Mary. High five. First of all, it's not even winter yet. Parowan is completely dry when Mary's taking the trash out. Janelle is in her Flagstaff apartment, the, the new one she had just gotten, the bigger one. So she's in that apartment. And Christine is in her condo in Idaho. She had not at that point bought the new house. So in terms of a timestamp, that's kind of what I could draw from what I saw in terms of knowing when they're watching this. Okay, so we talked about Mary. So Janelle's in her kitchen. She has the, <laughs> she's typical Janelle. The camera is as close to her face, and she's doing her usual. You know how she's always like, mm, I don't know. If you don't watch her Facebook, this is this is not funny to you. But she always has. I don't even have a cup here. I have a cup of hot chocolate in the other room. Um, she always has like a cup of tea or cocoa that she's holding, and she says, mm, "This is nice." <laughs> she has this really calm, sweet. You should all have coffee in the morning. Mm. So I literally laughed out loud when I saw the opening clip of her. I'll insert it here. My throat's been a little off. Probably can hear that, but my throat's been a little off. So I'm going to pour some tea to sip while, I, while we watch. For any of you who've seen any of what she's posted on her Instagram and, and Facebook, you'll find that funny. Because it's just, it's just Janelle. It's just Janelle. That's who Janelle is. Very close-up video. And mm, it's a beautiful day today, isn't it? Love yourself. <laughs> Bless you, Janelle. You're so great. Okay, we have Christine bouncing around like Tigger, but not in a bad way. She's just really happy, which, you know, happy Christine. 
she may be dating David at this point, so that might be part of why she's in such a good mood. But maybe it's just that she's, I mean, she was happy the minute she walked out the door and she had her apartment in Idaho, let's face it. So she's in a really good mood. She's getting herself a glass of wine to get ready <laughs> to watch this episode. Something she could never do when she was married to Cody because he didn't permit alcohol. And she sits down and she's like, oh, I'm so excited in that. And then we cut to Cody, who's happy walking with the camera on himself videoing himself saying hey this is what we're doing we're reviewing season one and robin is walking next to him like it's a death march <laughs> no joke we sit down we watch an episode the first episode of the season and discuss it with each other let's go down and do it she does not look excited to be doing this she does not she's not having it she knows this is not going to be good for her or Cody because how can any of them be? She has to watch it and comment on it in real time. And she doesn't have control over what she sees that Cody said on it. And she doesn't have control over what's going to come out of Cody's mouth here on the couch. She must be just sweating it out. She almost looks pissed. I mean, there's a possibility the two of them got in a fight earlier right before this taping because I feel like she holds Cody's feet to the fire in this first 30 minutes anyway. I haven't seen the second part. Not really. Um, a little bit. I mean, more than she ever has. I don't think so. And so I wonder if she was just in a really bad mood because they had a fight ahead of time and then she just did not. She's not into this. And she's like, I am not feeling like defending him right now. It's very possible. Very possible. Just my opinion. I don't know. And I just need to say, the glow-ups of Mary, Janelle, and Christine, especially Janelle. Janelle looks like a freaking model in this. She is beautiful. But they're all beautiful. And you know what? Robin's pretty, too, in Robin way. You know, the big helmet head. Not, not my thing, but... Uh, I mean, I think she just has a big head, so she probably should just wear it straight. I think that would be a good look on her, but, you know, whatever. I'm not a beautician. Look at this. Who am I to consult on hair? That's what I was thinking. <laughs> but her countenance and, and, and affect on her face is so sad, depressed, angry. I can't really read it, but it's not. It's the opposite of happy. We'll just say it's the opposite of happy. That's, so TLC's clever editing goes from Christine, who's the happiest of them all, right to Robin, making her look like an even larger sourpuss. Okay, so Janelle has this cute little reaction in her apartment. I don't always see what everybody else is saying until I see the, until I see the episode. And usually I'm like, oh, I should have said that. Oh, I should have said that. So we'll see. Cody says, let's go do this. He seems happy. Robin looks like she's going to the guillotine. And let's get going. Mary doesn't seem excited about it, but um, she just seems level. She doesn't seem excited about it. She doesn't seem like she's dreading it. She's just sort of like, all right, let's go do this. I really think it is as bad for Robin as she anticipated it. She didn't give a whole lot of reaction, quite frankly. She let a lot of it go, but right, well, let's talk some more about it. So at the very beginning, there's they're reflecting back to the time. It's well, it's the first episode of the season. So this is they had broken up. She's reflecting on last season and she wanted to clarify that she never kicked Cody out. She just told me he couldn't sleep in her bed anymore. And I didn't kick Cody out of the house completely. I just said he couldn't sleep in my bed anymore. <laughs> and you also packed up all his stuff and put it in the garage. <laughs> So it is true. I understand what she's trying to say. I think what she's trying to say is I didn't say Cody could never come over anymore. I just said, and I remember the episode, she commented on the fact that he could sleep on the couch. So he's still welcome to come over. But apparently in her mind, since he's just coming over and sleeping on the couch, he doesn't even need any of this stuff. I don't know if she packed up all his clothes or left a few of them in the closet so that he could change in the morning, but... His books and all this other junk that he had. I mean, for having four houses, he sure had a lot of boxes of stuff in her house. So you can see both sides. I can see both sides. Of course, Cody takes always the stance of, oh, I got kicked out of the house and cut off from my kids. All right, we'll talk about that later. It comes up in this episode. 
at the beginning we see pictures of Mary and Cody flashback from like when they first got married and at the beginning of their relationship and Mary makes the comment that's just a whole different guy he's a completely different person than who he is right now I, she remembers that guy she liked that guy that's not who Cody is anymore the first question that's answered from the viewers to Cody is, will you ever see a different hairstyle? And we, we see a, a little crack of smile on Robin's face as Cody's answering. And he says, I've had many different hairstyles, which is true. He's had it completely shaved off. He's had, definitely he had the, he straightens it out. And it was sort of like surfer boyish straight hair that was really, that was kind of like at the jawline. He's definitely had it where it's grown out and been frizzy. And now he has the big ringlet curls. And Robin said that that was her hand in giving him the ramen noodle hair, that she taught him how to do that. It's actually, if you look online, I have curly hair, as you can see. I, I don't take the time to do the curly girl method, but there is a method called the curly girl method. <laughs> Literally. That's what it's called if you look it up on YouTube and you want your hair to have his ringlets. Um, I just don't have the time to look into Someday I will. Someday I will. Because I would love to have big ringlets and not have to do it with a curling iron when I'm going someplace. But as somebody who has curly hair, I know that I, I have read often that, curly per that Cody perms his hair. I don't think Cody perms his hair. If I let my hair just air dry or if I comb through it, it is that complete frizz out that he has. That's just what it's like with this curly hair. And if I put the right products in it and I scrunch it enough when I'm drying it, I can get better ringlets and not just sort of this random curl that does whatever it wants and looks different every time. So I think that's his hair. I really do. And quite frankly, because he colors it as well and because it's so thin and there's so little of it, there's no way he could be coloring and perming his hair. He'd lose it all. It would all fall out. In general, even people with healthy hair are not supposed to be coloring and perming it. One of the viewer questions to Janelle was, if you could tell your younger self something, what would it be? And Janelle really had two things. One, she said that she would tell herself, take every educational opportunity that you have. She wished she would have done that. I am glad she did go get her degree, but apparently maybe there was more. Maybe she wanted a higher level degree. Maybe she wanted a different degree. I don't know. But that's something she would tell herself. The other thing that she would tell herself is to stand up for herself more when it came to her sister wives. Actually, she worded it as setting boundaries. She wished she would have set more boundaries with her sister wives, but she doesn't like to rock the boat, doesn't like to make waves. And so she was always the peacemaker. We learned this on the personality quiz. Janelle is the peacemaker. So then there's the part of the episode where Janelle's talking about her boys. She's talking about the situation with Cody and how he's not reaching out to the boys. He's insisting on the boys reaching out to him. He has told Janelle in the past that until they apologize to Robin, they're not welcome in the home. He's since recanted on that by the persuasion of Robin, who Robin has always insisted that was Cody's idea. And I don't doubt that. That's something Cody would just say. Because Robin is his possession and his prized possession. So you must treat her with the same level of respect and authority that you do for him. So I don't doubt that Cody came up with that in his mind, thinking it was no big deal and just a way to push forth the point that he is still the dictator of this family. Well, it didn't work. And the boys were like, not going to do it. Bobby Cohen in this instance means what he wants is an apology. This isn't a conversation he wants to have. This is a capitulation that he wants to have. So then eventually he backed up and said, okay, you don't have to apologize to Robin, but you have to come to me and you have to have a conversation with me, which everybody knew translated to this conversation is going to have to end in the boys apologizing to Cody. He wants the boys to agree to do whatever he says and then they're welcome to come back. But the thing is, is we've all raised really, really strong kids and really amazing kids and kids that have a voice. So the boys were like, yeah, no. We're not gonna do it. So it was a stalemate. Cody couldn't just let it go. He needed to have an apology to move on. That's where it stands. 
Now, as Janelle is talking in this, I will put up a picture of Robin. Robin cannot look at the television. Now, their television is straight ahead. I'll insert a picture of that, too. So there's a picture of them at the very beginning sitting down to watch TV. They are looking straight ahead, almost up. So it must be up on a wall or up on a credenza or a buffet or something like that. Cody the entire time is looking up like that. So you know the television is up and straight ahead. Whereas Robin, anytime one of the wives are talking and specifically talking about something that's really a truth about Cody that's not so great, Robin's eyes down. Sometimes her whole head goes down too, but her eyes will go down. She cannot watch the television. She has not seen this episode yet. It's not like, oh, I don't want to relive it again. She hasn't seen it. She can't look. It's so weird. The avoidance. Mm, a psychologist could have a field day with it. Not my field, but I found it interesting. And in this first 25 minutes that I watched, there are about two or three other times the exact same thing happened. I'll insert those as we go along. Now, do you remember the same thing I commented on in one of the one-on-ones? I don't remember which one because I did about 10 videos <laughs> covering the four one-on-ones. But in one of them, I was commenting on how when the video was shown, when they're like, watch this. And it was just Robin. It wasn't even like it's the two of them and she could rely on him watching it. She would not watch it. Her eyes were down. I don't remember what episode that is. You can maybe remember and put it down below in case somebody's new here and they want to see that. If you remember, um, put it down below. But I remember talking about how Robin can't even look at the screen. She has her head down. She's The avoidance, the denial, it's still happening. It's happening a lot in this watching of season 18, episode one. Cody, in response to the video, refutes that his boys were not welcome. Cody then, in response to the same clip, I'm not going to show all the clips because I want to show more their reaction to the clips. And I'm going to get a copyright strike if I put too much of it in here. So I'll just tell you about the scene because we've all seen the scenes already this year. And in fact, I even did a recap of Sister Wives season 18, episode one. Right when I started at episode 10, I went back and did one thinking I would catch up, but I, life was crazy and, and Welcome to Plathville was still happening and I couldn't, I haven't caught up yet, but I will. I will do episodes two through nine in season 18 sometime, unless they do this entire season of talkbacks to each episode, which would be brilliant. Pretty please. I don't have the time for it, but it would be brilliant and I will cover it if that happens. So in response to this, Cody refutes that his boys were not welcome. Lies. Oh, the lies. I well, never said my kids weren't welcome. Janelle says, my boys aren't welcome at my house. That's what she's been telling them. That's what her narrative to my life is. And that's how she's betrayed me with my boys. If they apologize. Cody... I don't know if he's choosing this or if he just doesn't understand, but Cody is not making the connection between the fact that his boys are not welcome until they initiate an interaction and sit down and have a conversation with him and apologize. He's a liar. Not to mention manipulative and stupid. He does not realize that that is him preventing them from coming over because of all of the rules and guidelines and checklists they have to go through in order to get over there. They can't just come over and, and have Christmas. There's criteria that must happen first. But he says, I'm not saying they're not welcome. I mean, it's semantics, right? Technically, in a warped mind, by leaving out information, this is true. But it's not the reality of the situation. They are not welcome, unless they do A, B, C, and D. He forgets that little part in between. How convenient is that? Wow. 
He's very good at talking around things to cherry pick information to make himself be right in a situation. Then we have a talking head with Christine where she's reacting to the episode and she reiterates, listen, they can't get together until the boys talk to him first. And she says that means he's requiring an apology. All right, let's go on. This video is going to be too long. Oh, we have the classic re-airing of the scene where Cody's mad at Janelle for not being um, sensitive enough to him. He said his heart is tender during this divorce, a scene that we all vomited when we saw because he's hated Christine, not been attracted to Christine, not loved Christine all these years. But we're supposed to believe that he's tender hearted now and, and hurt and a wounded little boy inside his soul because his wife divorced him. Oh, poor baby. It's not a normal divorce. This is not what normal people feel when they get divorced. And you've got three more wives that you do like better. Okay, two more wives that you like better. Janelle says that it's weird that Cody is saying that he's tender from the divorce because he's been telling Janelle for years that things were bad with Christine. And he's been telling Janelle for years that he doesn't want to be physically intimate with Christine. Oh my God. This is the first real spilling of the beans. All these years, Cody says, oh, I don't talk about any wife to the other one. I have individual relationships with them. And Janelle has just let us all know and put him on blast. For years, he's been telling Janelle things are bad with Christine and he doesn't want any physical intimacy with her. He's not only talking about another wife, but he's talking about what's happening in the bedroom with another wife to this wife. He's a soulless pig. Mm. Mm. I don't know if I'm more upset that he's just a complete liar or that he's a creep. A great question from the viewers is given to Christine. And the question is, why is Cody so angry that you left? He's got three other wives. And Christine gives a priceless answer that you know includes some intentional sarcasm and digging in at Cody. She basically says, I know, I had no idea. He loved me so much. Look how distraught he is. I'll put it in here because it really is a good response. I know, I didn't know he loved me so much, right? I had no idea he loved me that much. It's very sweet when you think about it because you know, he wouldn't be so mad if there wasn't so much love that was lost. So this is when as I mentioned before, Cody starts elaborating on the fact that he's upset with Janelle because she's not being supportive enough of him. He said that this is a time in his life that my wife should be saying to me, I love you, I support you, and I understand what you're going through. She's so confused because of all this time him saying, I don't like Christine, we're not getting along, I don't want intimacy with her, and yet... This is what, this is how he wanted Janelle to respond when she left. I support you. I love you. I understand you. She should be sympathetic to him. Why would you be sympathetic to somebody who didn't like somebody and then that person who he didn't like left his life? This would be the time that I would wish that my wife would look me in the eyes and say, I support you. Sure, I've been an ogre, but I love you and I support you. And I understand what you're going through. She's not doing any of that. And Janelle has a great response to the camera after watching that. And she basically said, and where was all of that for me? In the whole season, he didn't show her support and love and understanding. And I wonder where that is from him. I love you, I support you, I understand what you're going through. No, no, it's all about him and this supposed hurt he has over this divorce. I think it's his ego more than anything. We have the part of the episode then that they aired. This was a good episode. Episode one was a good one. It was a lot of reflecting back, but there was, I think, a lot of people didn't like it. They felt like it was too much reflecting back from the previous season. But I think that was necessary to remind us where they are and to have them talk about where they, they were in their feelings about the whole situation at the time. All right, that's just my opinion. I didn't mind episode one. 
So in this part of the episode, Cody is reflecting on how he's upset that Janelle and Christine are going to celebrate Christmas together in a neutral site. And it wasn't mentioned in this part, but it's implied that he was invited to come as well. And he was very upset by that. This is when they're all obviously sitting outside because Robin still thinks COVID's a thing. As the wives are all sitting outside, he's getting angrier and angrier when he heard that Janelle was going to get an Airbnb. We extended it so truly and Isabel can see you. But you're talking about everybody going to some neutral zone. This is my house. Okay, they're not welcome in his house. They're not welcome in his house without this conversation. So that's absolute rubbish. And he says, why would I go there? I have my house. Which Janelle then responds to after watching that part of the episode. His house, because, you know, he doesn't have other houses. It doesn't matter where the rest of his wives live. He has his house. That's in the lot. We're going to talk about this again, and I think I have in my notes later on this comment, but I just want to say it here to reiterate. Christine and Janelle did not celebrate Christmas together. Janelle choosing to be in the Airbnb on Christmas, we saw it. Christmas Day was her and her kids sitting in the apartment. They did not celebrate Christmas Day with Christine. Christine was up in Idaho doing her own thing on Christmas. So it is wrong every single time Cody mentions in this episode that she chose to spend Christmas with Christine as opposed to us. We'll get to that later. He actually mentions it. But I just have to say, <laughs> You right? The distortion of the reality, the rewriting of history, and the full-on lies really bother me. There may be more of Mary in the second half of this episode, but there's really not very much in the first half that I've watched so far today. Um, but here we do have a clip to Mary when she's watching everything that's going down and how they're not going to be with him at Christmas. And her response to it is that she is surprised. She's surprised by Cody's shock by the family doing things without him. And she says it's what he's been doing to her for all these years staying away. Poor Mary. She really is alone. I mean, she's alone by her own doing when it comes to her treatment of the other kids. And thus, she's not close with the other sister wives because of her behavior there. But in terms of Robin and her kids, she was treated so poorly during all of this. She just wasn't included, so now she's really out on an island. Mary picked the wrong side in this battle. <laughs> she shouldn't have been Robin's ally. She should have gone, made amends with Janelle and Christine and been with them. And Oh, I just would love it so much more. And it still can happen. Probably not. This wasn't a question, but it was an Instagram post. I believe it was Instagram. Um, it's a picture of Coyote Pass in the year 2073. And it's very funny because you see a metropolis city all around it. And it says Coyote Pass, still undeveloped. <laughs> so it's just Coyote Pass, greenery, and skyscrapers all around. <laughs> Pretty funny. Janelle, they showed it to Janelle. She laughed. Christine saw it. She laughed. They thought it was funny. This is the second time we hear Robin speak. I thought Robin literally was only going to open her mouth in completely unemotional, benign situations. So one, she opened her mouth when it came to Cody's hair. And now she's going to talk about a picnic table that was given to her by her dad that's on Coyote Pass. Um, so I started marking down the Robin responses. But she does give some content later on. At any rate, I wrote down, oh, oh Robin speaks again. And she liked the picture of Coyote Pass because it's the year 2073, but the picnic table from her dad is still there on the property. Then we cut to the scene of when Christine was in Janelle's apartment and she went over to help her build her suitcase. I don't know if it was the tree or the suitcase in this episode. But I don't remember. I didn't look that closely, but it was one of them. I think it may have been the bookcase. Because you know, the bookcase happened before the tree. So yeah, so it was a bookcase because this is episode one. 
And this is where Christine finds out from Janelle that Janelle will not be going over to Cody and Robin's house for Christmas, nor will they be coming over to hers. And she reiterates that at this time, the boys are not welcome. And it really irked me the response that Cody gave to this. He says, Janelle wants to be separate. Chanel wants to be separate. She's trying to put it all on me. There is no way that that mother wants her kids to be separated from the rest of the family. It was just a hurtful thing to say. I feel like we need another tell-all to respond to the comments that people are making in this tell-all, <laughs> or at least in response to the comments that Cody's making. There's nothing crazy or flamboyant that's coming out of anybody else's mouth, not even Robin's mouth. It's just Cody who's continuing to be a jerk and dig himself into a hole. Well, that's not completely true. I would love to hear Cody's response to the fact that Janelle outed him about talking to him about Christine for years, including how he didn't want to be intimate in the bedroom with her. But he probably wouldn't. He'd probably just say, oh, that's gross. I can't talk about that stuff. So Cody says, Janelle wants to be separate and putting it all on me. You! You liar! She doesn't want Christmas with Robin, Mary, or himself. So she's making this up. And then he says she just wants Christmas with Christine. No, she doesn't. She did it by herself. She did not have Christmas with Christine. How many times do we have to say this? Janelle doesn't want to have a Christmas with Mary and with Robin and with me. She'd rather have a Christmas with Christine. And so she's making this excuse about the boys. Is that what she said? No. He had to have been aware. I don't know. Maybe he's not aware. He's obviously just seeing episode one right now. So maybe he still is clueless. Maybe he still believes all of this fabrication that he put in his mind. You give him way too much credit. And can I just point out that Janelle and Christine were going to get together for Christmas. Either way, it had nothing to do with you, Cody. Do you love how often in these videos I just stop and I start talking to the people who bother me directly? Does that bother you or is that okay? <laughs> anyway, as if any of them will ever watch this. But somehow, I just feel like, as opposed to talking about them, I just want to talk to them. <laughs> Get it together! All right, so this I thought was one of the most shocking things he said in the episode. The fact that Janelle wants to be separate and that she's putting all of this on him. She doesn't want Christmas with Robin or Mary or himself. And all she wants is Christmas with Christine. <sighs> We've seen many episodes where he's admitted that's what he said. In fact, he got really upset when she said that the kids had to apologize to Robin. He's like, I said that you don't have to apologize to Robin anymore. They just have to come to me and talk to me and have a conversation. He said that. We saw it. And now he's saying she's making it all up. And I, I'm still not getting a read on Robin. I haven't watched the whole episode through. But I found it interesting that she very quietly turned and looked at him and said, is that what she said? And Cody said, no, but that's my interpretation. I mean, everything Cody says is his interpretation of everything, his distorted interpretation. Janelle doesn't want to have a Christmas with Mary and with Robin, and with me, she'd rather have a Christmas with Christine. And so she's making this excuse about the boys. Is that what she said? No. That's my interpretation. And then Cody goes on to say, what I see is Janelle punching a button to make me look bad with the family. <laughs> All right. So I think he means pushing buttons, but when you push someone's buttons, you're literally poking at them and trying to get them riled up. So that's not something you do to make somebody look bad with the family. I don't know what button she's punching when she's talking to her kids. <laughs> so she's talking to her kids and punching buttons to make Cody look bad. I mean, it's just, I don't even know where his, what his brain was thinking. It doesn't make sense that she's pushing his buttons because she's not even talking to him. You can't push somebody's buttons when they're not around. 
the, the phrase doesn't work. I it just it, it makes no sense. I mean, not a great analogy. As I've sat here and watched our episodes, what I've seen from Janelle is that Janelle is punching a button specifically to make me look bad with the family. It makes no sense. Okay, can I just say the number of you who wrote comments below my last video that just went, it made no sense. <laughs> because I was talking about how many times I say it makes no sense when I'm talking about Cody and I literally have to edit a bunch of them out. And I'm so sorry that I say it, that so many people were commenting, it makes no sense, LOL. And then somebody else told me that it needs to be merch. And I said, it'll be merch in 2025 <laughs> at around the merch stage. I'm not even doing live broadcasts with anybody now. I, don't, I wouldn't even know the beginning first step on how to do that. This channel is new. It basically began in the beginning of November. But y'all made me laugh out loud with telling me, who was it? I can't think of her name. A really pretty lady. Anyway, who recommended it needs to be merch and that she would buy the t-shirt that says, it makes no sense. <laughs> So here I am, because again, it makes no sense. Makes no sense. <laughs> okay, so after Robin says, is that what she said? And then Cody admits, no, but that's my interpretation. And then he talks about punching buttons. Now, originally when I started watching that, I thought, she's trying to call him out. This is when I thought they had been in a fight. Because I just saw her calmly turn to him and say, did she say that? So she's making this excuse about the boys. Is that what she said? I mean, because it really is calling him out, right? But she goes back. Cody gives a non-answer about button pushing. And she goes back and she asks the question again. She's actually a better interviewer of Cody than Suki was. You don't want to do Christmas separate? And Cody says no. And then she nods her head like, okay, yeah, that's what I thought. So now... As I'm watching her reaction to that and how she was probing just to get the answer that she wanted out of him to get it out there to everybody, I don't know that this is sincere and that she's upset with him and she's trying to hold his feet to the fire. I think this might be acting. Tell me what you think. I will definitely put the clip in here. It's, it's all about her. You don't want to do, you don't want to do Christmas separate. No, I never wanted to do Christmas separate. Why she keep saying that? <laughs> because that's what she's telling the boys to get them on her side. She's specifically trying to destroy my character with my family. Robin follows up after Cody says, no, I don't want to do a separate Christmas. She says, then why is she saying that? I think she actually said, why does she keep saying that? Or why does, why, yeah, something like that. Why does she keep saying that? So apparently Robin has heard this more than once, as she should have. And Cody's response is, because that's what she's telling the boys to get them on her side. That's what she's telling the boys to get them on her side. Those were your rules. She's just reiterating what you're saying, and now it's her fault for reiterating what you're saying? Oh, God, this is maddening. And we have zero video clip of Janelle telling the boys, your father doesn't want you over at all. Zero because it didn't happen. The only person who said that is Cody, who would not be there during this relate. None of the kids ever said, our dad doesn't want us to come over at all. They never said that. Janelle has never said, Cody doesn't want anyone to come over to his house. It's always been about this criteria and requirements. So this is all a lie, because that's what she's telling the boys to get them on her side. He ends it with, she's specifically trying to destroy shitty sister wife. That's what he said. And we're talking about Janelle now, not Christine. He's got no other ways to describe his feelings and emotions about people that get him upset other than calling them shitty. We have shit talking and shit. Like, I mean, and yet we grab these random words that have 13 letters in them and throw them in inappropriately into conversations. His language drives me crazy. It's the worst. At this point, Robin cringes. So then I started going back thinking, maybe she's upset with him. She's trying to call him out because she did not like that he called Janelle a shitty sister wife. And Robin says, wait, 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 whoa, stop. And she says, shitty sister wife? And Cody says, yeah. And Robin says, you need to stop making this about sister wives. And Sister wife. 
wait, 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 whoa, stop. Sister wife? Yeah. No, you need to stop making this about wife, sorry. Sister wives. Okay, I know. Cody completely misunderstands what she's trying to say. She's trying to say, stop making this about everybody else. This is what's going on with you and the boys. What you know, like this isn't about Janelle. She's a sweet sister wife because your boys don't want to come over because they don't want to do all the requirements to get over to your house. And because you're too arrogant to just drop all the requirements and say, forget it, it's Christmas, just come over. Can't do it. So there's a great moment here at the beginning where Robin says, she's a sister wife? And he says, yeah. And she said, you need to stop making this about sister wives. And he interrupts her at that point and says, shitty wife, sorry. Okay, I know. So he's like, oh, I'm sorry. I've included all of you in it. It's just Janelle. <laughs> She's like, that's not what I'm trying to say here. Wait, 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 whoa, stop. Sister wife? Yeah. No, you need to stop making this about wife, sorry. Sister wives. Okay, I know. Yeah, well, we have. But thank you for clarifying where you haven't included me in this, that this is about Janelle. What I'm trying to say is, is, don't make it about any of us wives. This isn't about us, all us wives. It's about you and your sons. Okay. Yeah, we had a family that was working together. They're trying to blame you and trying to blame me. And all those years in Vegas, we were all working together. Yeah, well, we had a family that was working together. I know. Well, you They're trying to blame you and trying to blame me. And all those years in Vegas, we were all working together. I know. Let's talk all around the problem again and try to find everything that bothers you that's not really related to the problem, but is adjacent to the problem. So that you can say, yeah, it relates. Not really. We're not answering the question or talking about the actual problem here, which is about you and your sons and your inability to get together. And Robin doesn't hold his feet to the fire anymore. She doesn't go, yeah, let's not talk about everybody else. We're talking about just you and your son. She just says, I know. Drop the ball, Suki. I mean, Robin. Although, Robin picks, it all back, picks the ball back up here. And she says, but I'm trying to say you always point out the sister-wife relationships and never talk about your actual issues with the wives. Okay. So, we kind of morphed. He managed to distract her enough with words and get her off topic that we're now talking about the wives, even though at the beginning she's like, listen, this isn't about the wives. Now it is about the wives, because Cody has steered the direction of the conversation that way. And she does, at least even though we are kind of on a different topic, she is talking to the fact that he talks about all the wives and everything that's wrong with them. He's not talking about his actual issues. And his response to that was, well, lack of loyalty. <laughs> like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. We were still talking about how it's everyone else's fault and not yours, Cody. Working together. I know, but I'm trying to say you always point out the sister-wife relationships and never talk about your actual issues with wives. Well, lack of loyalty. Well, that's different. You need to stop pointing fingers at Sister Rice. He's so clueless. He can't even understand Robin, who speaks Cody. Robin comes back and says, well, that's different. <laughs> you need to stop pointing fingers at Sister Wives. He pauses and he thinks. Wait for it. 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 Keep waiting. Wait for it. And this is the time where he comes back and says, you know, you're right. I'm not taking responsibility. I'm putting the blame on everyone else. I am the patriarch of the family. The onus of responsibility on the family unit falls on me. The buck stops at me. I need to make amends. I've been wrong. Yeah, he didn't say any of that. This is what he said. Sorry, they're sister wives. I'm saying it in terms of the bigger picture like the whole family picture, not just my picture, but it's a whole family picture. Words, random words, they make no sense together. He's still not talking about himself. And we catch a quick glimpse, if you notice, I will put it in here, of Robin rolling her eyes at him. 
sorry, their sister wives. I'm saying it in the terms of the bigger picture, like the whole family picture, not just my picture, but it's a whole family picture for me. There is no way she has come back three or four times trying to get him on track and take responsibility and not say it's always a sister wife's problem. He still can't do it. Now he's saying, okay, it's not the sister wives. It's the big picture problem. My big picture's falling apart. But not because of him. Not my problem. After she rolls her eyes, he just goes, for me. Because <laughs> it's about you, Cody, right? Yeah. Everyone's doing it to me. For me. My big picture's falling apart for me. All right. I could go on for days. I could literally just sit here and reel about this for another hour. I will save you that. We will move on. We cut to Janelle, and one of the viewers asked her the question, why is Cody so angry when he's getting what he wants? And Janelle has a very insightful answer. She said that in the beginning, Cody has always wanted the big family picture. And by the big family picture, which sometimes gets lost in conversation, the big family, I'm like, you still have a big family. She points out that early on, Cody wanted it to be that each wife and their kids were not separate wives and kids, that all the kids and wives would come together. Now, the wives never did a very good job of coming together, but they all did a very good job of getting their kids to come together. He wanted the kids to all see themselves as siblings. They did and they do. She said part of the anger that he is demonstrating now, she thinks, is because he's seeing all of that dissolve. Whose fault is that? And the truth is... All the kids were at Christine's wedding, except for Robin's kids. It's not dissolving. The majority of the family, 80% of the family is still all together and the big family. You have just separated yourself from them. And you're mad that you can't have your way, have all of them give you their money, but spend no time with them and have your loving relationship with your one wife and those kids. And for everything to be status quo as it's always been. The apple cart is upset and he can't handle. I'm used to things going my way. We show the clip that I loved. I remember going back. I am sure if you want to go back and watch my episode one, I'm sure it's dreadful. I'm sure 10 and 11 are dreadful as well because those are the first three videos that I made. And I don't even think I made them in that order. I think I did episode 10 first and then did episode one and then episode 11. I don't even know if they have inserted video clips that I do now in my videos or not, which some of you will like, because some of you have said you don't like that I insert video clips in them, so. <laughs> Survey says. Let me know if you like the inserted video clips or not. Give me some feedback on that, because it really takes a lot of my time. When I say it takes me eight hours to edit a 45 to 50 minute video, I'm not joking, that doesn't even include the time of recording it. It takes a long time to find all those video clips. I do it because to me it seems more entertaining and I, I it makes me laugh when I find a good one. Like there's some creative excitement that I receive when I find a clip that I'm like, oh, that's perfect here. But I'm more than happy to cut it down to a two hour process of putting a video out as opposed to eight and leave the video clips out if you don't want them. So give me feedback or maybe just pair back on them, Jenny. I am working on finding better video clips. The video clips are already clipped. So when it cuts off at the end of what somebody's saying, there's nothing I can do about it. Their, their clips are in clip sites. So I'm trying to be better at not putting any clips in when the end of the sentence is cut out. So it's better for you. But sometimes the clip is just funny. <laughs> I put it in anyway. Okay, I'm di I digress. We've gotten a little off topic. So this is the part of episode one where Christine said, if my relationship with my sister wives is up to me, i.e. it's my fault if things are bad between them, then why isn't it your fault if you have a bad relationship with your children? Which was like the most brilliant question of season 18, really. I love that. And I love that he has to respond to that. Because what is he going to say? He has no choice but to agree with that, right? No. Here's his rationalization for why it's Christine's fault for not getting along with her sister wise, but not his fault that he's not getting along with his kids. He says... She has the access to all of them, and I do not. When you move a man out of his home, you separate him from his children. Ah. 
First of all, Christine moving you out of the house, if that's even what she did, we can argue whether that happened or not. But let, let's say she said, well, for shits and giggles, let's just go ahead and say she kicked you out of the house and said, never come back in here again, which never happened. But let's say she did do that. What does that have to do with your relationship with your boys who are Janelle's kids? That's really where the drama and the problems are. He's not having problems with Christine's kids. He doesn't have problems with any of Christine's kids. Maddie, he doesn't get along with. She won't let her children be around him. Garrison, Gabe, Hunter, we don't know. And Logan, we don't know because they're never on camera and they're off in a, you know, doing other things. These are Janelle's kids that he doesn't get along with. The stuff he makes up in his head to justify things that make no sense. Drive me crazy. Make it make sense. It's delusional. And let's just point this out too. So she packs up his stuff and says, I don't want you in my bed anymore. I do remember her specifically saying he could sleep on the couch, but so she packed his stuff up. Let's say he did move out of the house. He lives in the same city. He can see truly as much as he saw her before because he only came over whenever he felt like it and showed up at like seven o'clock at night and left first thing in the morning. How much to truly see him? An hour or two? He can still go over and see truly for an hour or two. Again, a good point. You know, sometimes in some situations, men step up when it comes to a divorce and a separation and they spend more time with their kids. Because it's one of those light bulb realization moments. Not all of them, I know, but a lot of them do. Ones that are reflective and mature will be like, hmm, I really haven't seen my kids that much. Yeah, I've been in the same house, but I've been doing my own thing in the corner, on the computer, whatever. We happen to be in the same house, but I, I don't really talk to them. We don't really interact. And the separation and divorce creates an environment that when they get together, they do things together, they go on hikes, they play games, they do things they never did before. He has opportunities here to not only maintain relationships with Christine's kids, but make them better. But let me take it one step further. Who's left in the house? Truly, that's it. So by her kicking out Cody, it had no bearing on the relationships with the rest of the kids. McKelty's married living in another state. Isabel, she's moved on to Maddie's house and now lives in North Carolina. Gwendolyn has gotten an apartment in town in Flagstaff, doesn't live at home anymore. Peyton's been gone for a long time. He was in the military. Don't know if he still is. He might still be. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure he does not live in Flagstaff. And if he does, he does not live in Christine's home. So that leaves us with Truly. Truly is the only one that's left. So for him saying he has all of these problems with all of his kids because Christine has cut off contact. Lies. Um, she has access to my children and I don't. When you move a man out of your home, you separate him from the environment that he has an experience with his children. Saying the words doesn't make it true. I have an experience with my children here in this house because I'm in this house with these children. Einstein. If Robin said, hey, you have to leave, that would change the dynamic of the entire experience with my children. Moving on. We have a viewer question that goes to Janelle again. That is, at the beginning, you said that you thought Christine was a princess when she came into the family and that Christine thought you were bossy. At what point did that change? And she didn't give a specific example. She didn't, she just kind of talked in generalizations, but she did say, she kind of talked to why they're so close right now. And she said, you know, it's awkward to be really close with a sister wife anyway, because of the dynamic that they're also a husband to the sister wife and intimacies happening. And I, I mean, I can only imagine how many wives and the guy's mistresses are best friends. I've only heard of one situation. And they weren't even best friends. Did you hear about this? This was Denise Richards talking about, you know, she was married to Charlie Sheen, who, who's very much like Cody, <laughs> kind of crazy and all that. So anyway, um, they're divorced, but she had two kids. I know she has two daughters with him. He came over for Thanksgiving 
because she wanted the whole family together. Denise says Richards had moved on. There was another guy. I don't know if she's married to him or if she's just been living with him for years, but he's been kind of the the patriarchal figure in their family. But she still invited Charlie over for Thanksgiving dinner. So he come over and they're having Thanksgiving dinner and she looks out the window and she sees that somebody's in his car and she wanted to know who was in his car. Well, his prostitute that he had for the day was sitting in the car. Obviously, he wasn't going to invite her into the house. Denise Richards goes out and invites her to come in and eat Thanksgiving dinner so she wouldn't be by herself on Thanksgiving. <laughs> that is the craziest story I ever heard when I heard that story. I heard it from De Denise Richards' mouth, so it's true. Anyway, let me get back on track here. Okay, so Janelle is saying that she wasn't really close with um, the sister wives back when they were all married because of the dynamic of being married. But now with Cody out of the picture and out of the situation, they're growing very close and very bonded. She also is aware that Christine is a person who raised her kids from newborn when they were infants all the way through high school years and homeschooled many of them for many of those years. She was the primary caregiver. Janelle, as we saw in earlier episodes, worked 12 to 16 hour days. She wasn't around. And Janelle acknowledges that her kids are bonded to Christine. So that's huge, right? Her kids are bonded to Christine. If my kids are bonded to somebody because they were really good to them, I'm going to love that person. I've always been that way. When my kids were small, the friend of mine who would take time to really talk to my kids or maybe even bring them a book wrapped up at Christmas time or something small that really saw them as having value besides just me, I just, those friends, I just thought were great people. I think it's just a natural reaction as a mother that when you see someone being kind to your kids, you just like them. <laughs> Gosh, I didn't even realize as I started saying that how this could be a lesson for Cody, right? You want to be in good favor with your wives? Just be nice to your kids. Your kids, not even her kids. Your kids. Is it really that hard? Boy, in the talking head of Cody, he says, when a wife like Janelle undermines your rules. She undermines my ability to actually lead the family. I'm doing all the work to hold the family together. And I feel like as a, as a husband in a plural family, that's kind of your responsibility. When a wife like Janelle undermines your rules, she undermines my ability to actually lead in the family. Mm. He's talking about his kids like they're four and eight years old. They're late teens and into their 20s. And for Janelle, not forcing these adults in her house to stay hunkered down and go nowhere for over a year during COVID, that's breaking his rules and she's wrong. Undermining me, I don't share his same opinion. This girl, yes. So therefore I am subversive. It doesn't matter what my opinion is. It doesn't matter that he's, he doesn't take it into account. I'm just supposed to be like, okay, that's your rules. Okay, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna bow down and, and obey those. These were adults that had girlfriends, that had jobs, that were going to college. He wanted none of that. I guarantee if you were courting Robin during COVID, you would still be getting together with her. You'd find a way, Cody. But Janelle gives a brilliant answer to this. She says that undermining to Cody is simply because she has a different opinion. Cody wants a subservient wife. Cody wants blind followers in his family. Cody wants a wife without a mind to think for herself. He wants sheep following the shepherd. And Cody goes on to say, I could be a great leader in this family, but I don't have access to the kids. Again, how many times do we have to say the exact same thing that's wrong and a lie? I could be a great leader in the family, and I should be, in spite of their undermining. But I don't have the exposure to the children that the mothers have in this family. You have access to your kids. The only time you didn't have access to the kids is when you put your own parameters on yourself, not permitting yourself to get together with them or to have them come to your house. Other than that, and you preventing them from getting together with you, you've had full access. And let me just point out that there's this thing called a cell phone that you can actually see people's face and talk to them. Could have been talking to his kids every day. 
You could have been having salsa brava dates with your children every single day and eating plates of beans with cups of hot water and 19 lemons in them. But you chose not to. Janelle's response? So having the mother support me would be the thing to do. That's a cop out. That's a cop out. Queen Janelle. Spot on and a great place to end. This is good, isn't it? This is good. Okay. I'm going to try to get this video out today, maybe even publish it by this evening. I don't know. Today, tomorrow, and by Christmas morning, I will have both videos covering this entire episode out to you. Okay, I know you're probably all busy and visiting family and doing other things this weekend because 99% of America is celebrating Christmas this weekend. So if you don't see me before then, let me be the first to wish you a very Merry Christmas.